that your day and your night is made up of appointments. And everything in your day and your night can move around. Your doctor's appointment, you can delay it. Your lunch time, you can delay it. Your sleep time, you can delay it. And to your appointments in the day, you can move them however you want. But there is one appointment you cannot move. Well, that is the times of Salat. And that's why it's wrong when someone goes to work and then he says, Wallah, or pray it at night because I'm at work and I cannot pray them here on time. Halat, that's wrong. If you did that, you did not establish the words of Allah. Aqim as Salah. Aqim as Salah means you do not move the Salawat from their times. This is the only one appointment you have in your life that you cannot afford to move it. Even if you are sick, you pray it as you are. It does not drop in any, any kind of circumstance. In other words, as-salat is one of the main reasons for why one earns his rizq. How does it make sense now when one goes to work or oh, some of us are not here for salat al-jum'ah? Why? Because we're at work. Allah Azza wa Jalla is saying to you, as-salat is the reason for your source of provision. And that you've turned the meanings upside down for those that don't attend their salat al-jum'ah and those that try to bunch up all the salawat at the end of the day. You made it like your risk was your work and a salat had nothing to do with that. Well, subhanallah, this is the advice of the prophets for their sons as well. And if you looked at the case of Ibrahim alayhi salam, what an incredible prophet he was. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he receives a commandment and an order from Allah to leave his children in the desert and to go off to Palestine. Where are they? They're in Mecca. There is no living being there. There's no animals there. There's no vegetation there. It's a hot, dry desert and he's leaving his wife and his son, the baby Ismail, in this kind of environment. As he walks out of Mecca, going towards Palestine, he makes a dua and he says, Rabbi, inni askantu min dhurriyati biwadin ghayri dhi zar'in inda baytika al-muharram. He says, oh Allah, I have left my family for Riyati, my generation. I have left them. Where? Biwadin, in a valley. In a place, in a valley where there is absolute no vegetation. What's the first dua he makes? He says, Rabbana, liyuqimu salah. Oh Allah, allow them to be from those who establish a salat. Then after that, he says, warzuqum min al-thamarat. Provide for them some provision so they can eat and drink. That wasn't his first dua for his family. He didn't then say, oh Allah, provide for them. Oh Allah, feed them. Oh Allah, rescue them and save them from starvation and thirst. That wasn't the first dua. The first one, Rabbana, liyuqimu salah. Oh Allah, allow them to establish this salat and allow the meanings of salat to penetrate deep in their heart. Because if that's the case, a rizq is going to come. Provision will come. Al-fatih will come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't have to worry about that. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself was no different, when Allah azza wa jal commanded to him, he says to him and enjoin, encourage, advise your family, bis salat wa stabir alayha, and be patient concerning your advice and commandment to them of a salat. La nas'aluka rizqa, nahnu narzukhu. We do not ask you for any provision. You don't have to provide for anyone. Nahnu narzukhu, Allah will give a rizq. You finish your salat al jumah You go back to work, and you find someone backbiting some other Muslim brother. And you say to him, This is haram. We cannot backbite someone when he's not among us. For he says to him, Brother, you've changed. You weren't like that before. You used to backbite with us. What happened to you? Your answer is simple. One word. And because I pray. Allah is strong. But it coupled with his strength is precision. Allah Azza wa Jal knows exactly what you did. How you did it. Why you did it. When you did it. What is the reason behind why you committed the sin? This food that you're eating is from Allah. He provided it. That milk that you breastfed for two years. Where did it come from? Other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who allowed it to come from between يعني, blood and between whatever it is from inside and eventually what comes out pure milk for you to drink. Who provided all this for you? Allah